Hello everyone, today we are going to implement a small application with the PageView widget. How you can see on the right side, we have different kind of pages and we can scroll through the pages. That's what we're going to implement to the left and to the right by swiping. In the landscape mode, we try to accomplish that the title and the description text is always shown at the bottom. And if we scroll, it will automatically scroll down to this text and not show something like only the image, which is not really great. We start with an empty application. At the top, we have an add bar, which is shown here. And the body property here is all this kind of information below. We want to add our page view and there's a special constructor called builder and it requires an item builder and if you go in IntelliJ just with control over this item builder you see what information is needed. In this case we need a build context and an index with int and we will just pass here build context and index and we want to return just a container right now and another property is needed which is item count it says how many pages are shown in this page view builder widget and in our case, we just pass pages.length. The pages attribute is inside of another class, inside of data data, I have created a list of page entries. Page entry is an object with an image, a title, a description. And if we go back to our list, we see here that we have different kind of page entries. Each page entry has a title and a description as sample data and also an image parse. Our images are stored in the directory images and there we have our different kind of images which are shown in the application and it's also really important that we have our images declared in our pubspec jamo file. So we have our three images declared here under the property Flutter and under assets and it's important that we have here a space and here also a space between otherwise it wouldn't be recognized. Now our item builder returns a page entry widget instead of an empty container and the index which the item builder provides will be passed to the pages attribute which is our list. The page entry widget is responsible for rendering the image, the title and also the description. So let's have a look. Here we have a stateful widget and here is our build method. And there we have a list view which is responsible for showing widgets below each other. So first of all we have here children and the first child is the image which is shown at the top. Then we have um, a text, the title and also the description and between we have two size box which are responsible for the space between here and right now we want to also to have a little bit padding because it doesn't look that good so we just go here and add a padding to this list view so in IntelliJ I will just convert it to a block body first, then I will add a padding and do it back to the expression body. So if I save it, there we go, we have a padding around our content which we want to show and it looks much better than before. Now let's tackle the problem with the scrolling in landscape mode. So if we see it right now, it will always scroll to the top and we want to show the title and description um, after scrolling. And 
how we can achieve this first of all we will just add this little method here which I copy there we have different kind of information we need a controller obviously so we go at the top and at our scroll controller controller and this controller will be added to our list view which is responsible for the scrolling um, between the image, the title and the description. So the next thing we want to do is to override the init state method. So we go to add the method scroll to end and provide an information for the milliseconds and we pass 1000 which means one second. The next thing is that we wrap our padding widget with an orientation builder which builds the content here on the right side depending on the orientation so if we have the portrait orientation or landscape orientation we can really decide on this property how we want this widget here to look like and first of all we add here scroll to end to say okay if the orientation changed we want to directly to scroll to the end and then we pass here our information which thing which needs to be rendered and that should do the trick let's try it out so now we change our app to the landscape mode and we see our title and description directly and if we scroll between the pages um, the title and description is also shown and that's what we wanted to accomplish um, even if we scroll up, it's always um, the title is shown and the description. And we accomplished this kind of thing with the scroll controller, uh, which will be attached to the list view. And later we just jump to the max scroll extent of the controller. So we say our list view, okay, please jump to the end of the list view don't scroll here scroll to the end and that's what our application is doing right now now we want to include an indicator so we just go to pub.lang.org and there we type page view indicators then we want to install it so we just copy this one here and place it in our pub spec journal file so we go at the top and just replace it here like I did and we also import this kind of stuff and we will create another widget here which we call page circle indicator and we copy this thing here inside what we got here and let's now create the page circle indicator so now we implemented the circle page indicator into our page circle indicator this one is the object provided by the plugin and here we have the size which we provide with 12 we can even go for 30 so you see the difference here we have bigger dots but I will go with 12. Then you can specify the color. In my case, I took the primary color and for the dots which is not selected, I specified that the primary color is being taken with opacity of 35%. So it's a little bit less color inside. And you also specify here how many dots you want to show. So if I change it to five, for example, you have here five dots but we will just pass this as an argument here the last thing is that we have here our current page notifier this will be passed to our widget here and the circle page indicator get then notified about 
a scroll change behavior and will therefore change the dots here at the bottom. Currently it is not doing anything, so let's change it right now. So the next thing that we want to do is to wrap our page view builder with a stack widget so that we can show multiple widgets overlapped. So let's just import it here, our page circle indicator, and if we refresh it, we see our page indicators here at the top. That's not what we really want to do. So let's wrap it with another widget, the positioned one. It's especially for the stack. And then we go like, okay, we want to have bottom 8.0. Now it should show here. And we want to center it, so we have to provide both informations, left and right. So it says, okay, to the left I will have zero, to the right I will have zero. So you will just center this widget. And there we have our widget and it's not working. So let's go ahead. We need to add a controller. So we just add here a controller with a initial page declared, which is set to current page notifier.value. And this value is zero, which we declared here. Another thing we need to add is the on page changed method. So every time the page is changed here, like we go to a different page, we get this index and we will just set the current page notifier value with this index and this will automatically inform our, our page circle indicator about this different index which we now have. And now it should work. We have our indicators updated every time we change the page and this is only because we just pass it here this current page notifier value and set it to index and the page circle indicator gets this value and just updates the dots depending on this new value. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter and see you soon. Bye!